Hello and welcome back to Dolphin Bay Rescue Program. Welcome to the next episode. Today with the orangutan therapeutic, oh, therapeutic, I still can't manage that word, um, area. So what we are going to do today is we are going to build a uh, area that is meant to be, first of all, as a rescue program uh, for these beautiful apes and uh, also a area which is used um, to, you, you know, do some uh, ther therapeutic stuff uh, for children or for disabled people or stuff like that because as you guys did do some great commentaries in last uh, you know or actually comments in in the comment section of the last video you gave me some very good insights of, of what we could do and um, yeah I ended up choosing this project because I found this very interesting um, I did not know that uh, these monkey uh, these apes sorry uh, stupid German here uh, that these apes the orangutans um, actually do act as <coughs> therapeutic animals um, I had no idea I really did not know this and so um, I looked a little bit into it and I uh, got some inspiration, you know, of, uh, yeah, some stations, rescue stations, blah, stuff like that. But I just wanted to go for a little bit more of, a, of an own idea here. And what we are going to do is basically a little, it's not a show area. So please don't mistake that with a show area. What we are building over here is a little stage and I want to call this um, the therapeutic stage. This is where um, the therapy can take place. So this is kind of an area in which the orangutans will be guided um, if there are some, you know, patients in there. Um, and I think it's very important to have this dedicated space because as I was, you know, I, I wasn't really uh, too sure if, if this is really happening, so I looked into it. But these animals, as, as gentle and beautiful and majestic they are, they can also be aggressive, you know. Um, these are freaking, freaking 100 plus kilogram um, apes, it's, you know, at least the male ones, and it's... My god, they are huge, okay? So um, it, it really is also important that you have a dedicated area so they cannot break free and, you know, do some madness. Um, but yeah, so the, obviously it's a guided uh, therapy. Um, and so this is the area. What we're doing here is really, and this is what took very long actually um, to build this area because I wanted to uh, spend some time getting the details right and all that kind of stuff so um, we spend a lot of time making sure that this area is exactly what we wanted to have and that is the uh, you know little therapy stage as I call it. Uh, it will actually feature three different gates that lead into three different areas of the habitat and this habitat will also have a dedicated island. This is what we did at the very beginning of the episode um, so that the animals can climb over onto the island and have a very much uh, private space completely um, separated from uh, the stress and the noise of this uh, rescue area program park, however you want to call that actually, um, and so that they have a lot of privacy and can thrive in their breed, whatever, you know, this is the idea behind this and uh, you will see in a real time part how this all turned out to be looking. Um, another little thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that this build has been done again on my live stream. And if you guys have actually uh, been waiting for it, yes, I've been back um, to, to Twitch and I will be back to Twitch uh, in the next couple of weeks again. So I'm, I'm not yet ready to tell you a real schedule because I have to figure out how it works with my new job and how it works once um, the COVID situation has changed a little bit because Germany is opening up again completely. So um, it'll, it'll change. Um, different things come back like you know football training is coming back and stuff like that and as soon as I know how it all works also with my daughter obviously um, and it, it all is arranged I will give you a full schedule until then I will just stream every now and then when there is some time and if you want to be ahead of uh, things and want to know why when um, make sure to follow me on any of the social medias I definitely always give you guys a notification on Instagram on Twitter or in the Gilded app so in case you're not following anywhere, then I would highly recommend to do this um, because that way you can actually also take part in that and uh, get the notification whenever I'm alive. I will try to stream at least once a week. Um, my, my real goal is to stream two times a week, but I know it's kind of hard at the moment. Um, so yeah, I think two times a week will come back as soon as uh, the baby is sleeping the entire night and uh, also going to bed a little bit earlier than at the moment. Um, and then I will be, uh, you know, in the position to do this uh, past uh 
past evening is actually, is that even a word? Like actually late in the evening, because that's where I used to do my stuff anyways. So that is the uh, basic idea. And um, really one, one topic that is close to my heart. I did not really talk about that yet. So I want to, you know, talk about this real quick while you can see the backstage area being built here. Um, I will talk a little bit more in the time lapse about this backstage area. But before we do so, um, I may ask you if you guys do have social media such as Instagram um, or also on Twitter, then please, if you haven't already, give me a follow, especially Instagram uh, would be something really cool because I'm changing a little bit how I approach these media. I have uh, gotten a lot of feedback, a really beautiful feedback um, in, in regards to how you want to see stuff and so on and so forth. And I will definitely try to make the Instagram a little bit more of a private space in which I'm giving you a bit more of an insight to my actual life. So me as a person rather than all the content. The content will be filtered into the stories and into the highlights. So you can see, you know, screenshots of my projects. You can see some short films of my projects, some stuff even that is not on YouTube. So in case you want to see something over there, um, it will be all put into the story segments or the Instagram TV or the reels. But this, the um, the feed section and the new postings will actually be uh, from a bit more for me uh, maybe in the future some pictures also of baby girl who knows um, you know at least some some sneaky ones you know um, this is very important to me and if you guys want to see something about me a bit more private again um, then I highly recommend to check out my Instagram it is always the same it's Rudy Rand Camel you will find that if you type in the name um, no big problem about that and obviously also what would be really cool is once we would reach 10k people or 10k follower on Instagram I can finally use that dang um, swipe up to give you a direct link to a video or to a stream which would help tremendously in building the community and also obviously in building uh, the views and stuff on the live streams because I still get a lot of messages that people miss out because the push notifications on um, on Twitch are also not as good as they could be or have been in the past who knows and YouTube you all know the story um, so yeah I really would love to give you guys a chance to to not um, you know, tangle around with this stuff anymore and just, you know, if you want to watch, uh, you can see it from every source uh, available and if this is your go-to page and I know that a lot of people use Instagram as their go-to app, uh, that would be that would be amazing. You will find also the link in the description as always. If you don't want to type it down, you can, you can do it. But it would be lovely if you guys could do that. That would help a bunch and yeah, I would love to see you guys over there as well. Now let's talk about this backstage area just as we build it. Now, the idea behind this build is obviously, and I talked about that already in the last episode, um, some builds will focus a lot more on functionality rather than beauty. And this habitat is already leaning a little bit more towards the functionality aspect of things. So this is a rather big area of backstage uh, madness where there's just a lot of concrete, there's just a lot of uh, open space uh, where they can move around, a very generic shelter, and then there's like a very generic generic open shelter and there will be another small shelter just to make sure that they have enough um, security from storms and stuff like that and something you definitely also always need to consider being so close at seaside we will also do something in order to make this area a little bit more secured from storms and so on because at the moment there's nothing like you know wave breaking or something like that so we will need to put a little bit more attention onto that one but this is for a future uh, future build. And um, yeah, at the moment we're building this and you will see this a little bit better in the real-time part. But yeah, this is like the little gate where you can go in. Um, but again, this will be a bit of a not so nice looking backstage area. It's a bit more, again, functionality driven, making sure everything is easy to clean, everything is easy to use. Um, but then there will be a lot more nature area over here, as you can see. Um, this will be the only visible area for the guest, which is borrowing the same fence as we use for the cloud leopard again in case you haven't seen that episode it was the last episode where we did the clouded leopard habitat um, and this one is just taking over here because again I think this is you know since this is like a rescue station they obviously don't have that much money and they will have to fund everything they build um, and this makes a lot of sense that they will reuse the same design a bit more often uh, than in zoos which mm, potentially have a bit more money and then can actually do some theming or whatnot this is something that is impossible over here so 
we will have to look into making sure we reuse a lot of stuff in this build because that's how they would do it they would reuse all the materials and um, a lot of rescue stations actually use materials that is uh, given to them for free you know sometimes it's like people would uh, throw some stuff away um, but which is still fine then they give it to rescue stations so they can build stuff together and this is why some of the habitats and some of the areas are looking a little bit messy because they're always using the stuff that is just given to them for free because they don't have the money because they put all the money into taking care of the animals and um, this is also the reason why this area already looks a little bit too nice and um, I will actually have an episode coming in the future I'm quite sure that we will do this as an episode which is actually making things look worse um, <laughs> to, to make this a bit more realistic so we will put a bit more jank down we will make sure that everything is a bit more uh, broken looking we will you know rotate some pieces so it looks a bit more as if they're fallen off and all these kind of little bits of details that make things look a bit more realistic and not not too um, not too perfect because that's what what most likely sets builds apart you know if you want to do realistic builds it's not not even about the details in terms of how much stuff you have and how much colors you use or whatever it is most likely about the imperfection in the build whether it's the texturing um, the difference in texturing uh, the incorporation of let's say sun effects sometimes you have that that you know uh, color is faded out a little bit more saturation goes down and it's just like brightened by the sun um, or like little things like broken roof pieces or just some uh, you know I don't know stone plates that are broken and all these kind of little bits um, make it look a little bit more realistic by default because reality is not perfect and there is no no such a thing than a perfect building after a couple of months okay it's only perfect until you open it and sometimes it's even before you open it um, so this is the basic idea of making it look more realistic you can see I do already some things over here by using these corrugated um, roof pieces and you know all that kind of stuff and now I need to end the real time uh, the, uh, the the time lapse part because we will now cut over into the into the real time part and I will now go down and take care of my little daughter who seems to have a little bit of hunger or oh, is hungry I guess it is uh, let's see what the wife says anyways have a good time and um, make sure to check out the real time part in a few seconds So, as promised, we are here in the real time part, and as I already said in the time lapse, it's not the finished version, but uh, you can actually see why it took so long in the live stream. I mean, surely because of live stream, but also because obviously um, there's always a lot to do. And I did some tweaks off screen, uh, which took me quite a while. So you can see right now we have an educator standing over here. We have a little drum. You know, I imagine there is someone sitting on that thing um, for the therapeutic um, activities, however you want to call that. There's like a grab ball. Um, this is where the orangutans could come in from. We've got like a bobbin over here, like a feeder. And uh, to make that all a lot more realistic, I put um, an education spot over here. And this actually connected. You can see the, the mechanics actually bugged into it. So you can see what I meant. Now we can also hit play. I had the um, apes in there just to have a good screenshot um, because they were always going away and the sunlight is not really uh, helping. But um, now it's turning its butt towards us anyways and you can see the educator is not moving because it's not connected to any area but um, they technically could move but you know they don't really have an idea where to go um, so yeah it is part of the habitat and it's also part of the actual you know area if you will um, and I think it's a very good uh, combination that way and you can see if I do click one of the orangutans um, uh, I will uh, open that up you can see they can move in here um, but they cannot escape via this area I think this is the best way possible they can uh, potentially escape over here uh, I'm not really paying too much attention to this right now because as already said this island over here will be a main part of this habitat so um, this is a rescue program and hence they will get a lot more freedom um, over here and maybe I'm even going to extend that all the way to this island just as if this is like a very separate sanctuary for the orangutans to to thrive in you know so that they can actually live on that uh, island and then move all the way back. I have no clue if that works or not. 
um, time will tell, but I think for the moment this is a very good start to a nice habitat for them. So you can see this is more or less the, the shelter area and I think we are slowly getting into the real vibe of uh, the more Caribbean um, island vibe-ish area. You know, it's nothing, it's nothing in particular special, uh, but I think it's really looking good this way and it will be integrated into the rescue program just as it is supposed to be. And um, yeah, that's already it for the real-time part. There's not really that much more to say. Um, I can I can show you a little bit more the details here, but you know, you've seen them, how they have been built. So yeah, that's like the area where you go through as a guest. And then uh, this is the backstage access. We do have um, this raised area slightly, so you can actually watch from over here if you want. Um, and this is like in the sun like giving a bit of a better view and then you've got some shade the idea is that you know people can sit down here just relax if you have some groups or so over here they can relax in the shade and you know have some boxes here i imagine there could be like a fruit bar or something as well and then you go here and you can see um, this is where the apes can move through and if they do not move enough over here we can always close off that gate um, and then this should be nice and fine and we've got some escapes happening I don't know what exactly that is, but I don't care too much right now I will fix that later and yeah, so this is the this is the habitat and I think um, it looks really cool And we are really getting into the realistic vibes here This all will be backstage just as I said there will be a lot of backstage We might have like a little uh, connection over here Maybe we're going to make a bridge like a water bridge, which is also made on top of these uh, things here um, So I'm not really sure how exactly I will make that uh, but you know um, if you guys have ideas always put them down and we still need a story for the orangutans as I said um, there were some comments about this but we didn't really have a, a big story yet so if you guys have a story that could fit to the orangutan uh, rescue program please leave it down below in the com comments and if you have even more knowledge than what has been already posted about um, therapeutic activities with orangutans I'm also more than interested and if you have got ideas for the next habitat and for another program also let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. I talk to you in the next one. Enjoy and have a good time. Stay safe everyone and goodbye.